Hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Devontae, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Yo, I took it upon myself because I was very curious because I seen someone tell me that the raw viewership number, I looked back at some of the older comments, the raw viewership number was around 1.3 million views this week. That's fucking crazy, bro. We just came out of SmackDown, for an example, hitting one of its lower viewership numbers in years. And then I see Raw right now in the same state of affairs. Raw this week got exactly, just to say, hang on, 1.339 million viewers. That was this week right here with the first hour doing 1.36, the second hour doing 1.32. 29 by the way and the third hour doing 1.32 million flat so that means it decreased over time but it stayed in that 1.3 million view range that's fucking crazy bruh and then you look at the dynamite numbers this week also by the way all the links will be down in the description box below the dynamite numbers this week uh i believe this one was let me see hang on for a second uh, the September 25th episode of Dynamite averaged 702,000 viewers, up only barely 2% from last week, which did 687,000 views. And then obviously with the SmackDown number this week doing like, what was it, 1. 4, what was it 1.4 million or something like that? I got that link down in the description box. Hang on, I'm going to look it up myself real quick. I forgot what I said on Tuesday. I think I said SmackDown this week did around, yeah, 1.4 million views which was down to the 1.7 last week, which was an all-time low for SmackDown and years also outside of like, you know, preempted events and going to different channels and shit. Now, mind you, I wanted to focus primarily on SmackDown, on Raw and on Dynamite because those are the three flagship shows going strong right now in professional wrestling, right? Those are the three primary shows going strong in professional wrestling. Now, I want to talk about this because this is something that I feel like is super duper extreme. Now, you got the raw number this week, right? All time low, right? Not all time low, but like ridiculous. Might, might be all time low, actually, now that I think about it, but at least in a long time. But I just want to talk about the year that they did, the, the number that they did last year around this time, right? Apparently, the number that they drew this year, last uh, this week, last year was 1.4 million viewers which is really, really low also. And we'll get to the football thing in a minute, but I just want to just make this a thing real quick. 1.4 million last year. That was for Raw compared to the 1.3 million they got this year. SmackDown this year or last year, this one got, let's see, this is obviously going to be a big drop off because it was on broadcast television on top of the football stuff. But just to notate, they got 2.2 million viewers last year compared to this year. Obviously, that's a ginormous decrease we're talking about damn near a million fans who fell completely off a cliff and then you have dynamite this year versus what it got last year hang on for a second looking this up right now hang on goddamn airplanes in the background this this year we got 702,000 but last year it got 984,000 for grand slam think about that for a second man every single show decreased dramatically compared to where it was last year and compared to where it was two years prior to that dynamite for a grand slam got 1 million viewers two years ago around this time got 1.2 million viewers back in 2021 let's see smackdown although again that's broadcast television just to illustrate this point even further smackdown last year did about uh as i said 2.2 uh, million viewers and a year before that it looks like it did about 2.5 million viewers Bruh, look at this. And then the year before that in 2021, and that was on, um, oh, oh that was skipped. Okay, never mind. That was bumped by FS1. And then let's look at Raw for a second. Raw, two years ago? Let's see. Just to illustrate this point even further, just to show you that the decrease in professional wrestling is dramatic right now. It's not just a football thing, man. The Raw viewership two years ago looks like it was about 1.6 million. 1.6 million fans. Now, granted, and compared to weeks around football season a couple of years prior and last year, obviously, there were numbers better the week following that or the week before that. But it still shows a steady decrease and decline in professional wrestling, regardless of the football argument, because you'll hear people all the time talk about, oh, well, football is the reason why professional wrestling around this time usually ends up having low viewership number. And I'm not denying that. That's obviously the case. But at the same time, though, are we going to ignore? Or that year after year the companies and themselves are still decreasing it's not just decreasing against football this week it's not just decreasing against football throughout the entire season it's decreasing year 
over a year against football. That's that's the problem that I'm having. Just because you decrease with football doesn't mean you can go right back to that same number and then decrease against football still. It doesn't mean you can stagnate and still compete with football at the same number that you were doing the previous year, or at least go down just a little bit, but not as dramatically as what you're seeing with the numbers right now. And it's not just highlighting what happened uh, last year, it's highlighting what happened two years ago compared to where it is right now. Because one of the stupid arguments that I hear all the time as far as this is concerned, not just the football argument, but people People like to bring up the stupid ass argument about, well, Devante, do you want to talk about the fact that technology is just insane right now, Devante? Can we talk about the fact that technology right now is ridiculous and people have other ways of watching Raw, of watching SmackDown, of watching Dynamite? See, see, I thought about that for a second too. And just to bring this point like really, really home, look at 2017. Now, I think most people will argue in 2017, as far as the product is considered, one may make a strong argument that the product is not much better than what you see today. It was only seven years ago. Uh, Netflix was still a thing. All these other, uh, uh, what was it called? It? Uh, Netflix was still a thing. Uh, Hulu is still a thing, right? Uh, all these, uh, YouTube is still a thing. WWE, they're thriving in their YouTube numbers back in 2017. All these social media apps, all these social media devices, all these ways to DVR and watch Raw, and watch SmackDown, they were available no different today than what they were back in 2017, right? We can all agree with that. Look at the numbers back in 2017. This was just seven years ago. Same devices, folks. Same devices. There's no excuse. The number that they got, and, and mind you, I'm using the exact same time frame, bro. The exact same time frame, man. Here, hang on for a second. We're going to go to September. Check this out right here, bro. Raw, mind you, this is the same time frame, September 18th of 2017. And mind you, they went down in the ratings compared to their previous week. Raw in 2017 got 2.8 million viewers. This was down from 2.9 million viewers. Now, I did the math because I was curious. I added up all the numbers this week between Raw, SmackDown, and Dynamite. The entire viewership between Raw, SmackDown, and and Dynamite was 3.3 million views. Around that number, if you were to round it up, 3.3 million viewers. Bruh, tell me how Raw, SmackDown, and Dynamite all together in 2024, we're not talking about the Attitude Era. We're not talking about the Ruthless Aggression Era. Hell, I'm not even talking about the late PG Era, where you can make an argument in regards to technology being so sparse that you had to watch it on television. We're talking about in 2017, with every device available, no different than what we have right now for the most part, why is Raw by itself, by itself, and 2017 viewership number is almost exactly the same as all three of the main shows combined today. Mind you, I'm not looking back in like, you know, January of 2017. I'm not looking all for the, no, 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 no. I went to the exact same time frame that these shows were performing in today against football just like raw competed against football in 2017 in the same time frame there's no excuses you bring up these football arguments you bring up these arguments in regards to the olympics you bring up these arguments in regards to well no one's watching cable like they used to watch back then no one was watching cable in 2017 folks what you talking about? No one was watching cable back then too. People were watching YouTube, no different than we're watching it right now. People are watching Netflix, no different than we're watching it right now. It's a cop out. It's an excuse. You make up all these bullshit arguments when in reality, the product that you claim to be liking so much, it's a failure. Flat out, that's the entire argument right there, bro. And I'll do you one even better just to kind of tie a bow on all this for all the people who are still in denial that professional wrestling is doing really great right now. We're in a boom period. Did I mention, guys, right now? Did you know? We're in a boom period. The average number that Raw did on a year-to-year -year basis back in December of 2020, uh, and mind you, I looked at the last year uh, the last day of the year now mind you this is forbes and i hate using forbes as a site but at the same time though they're trying to reference somebody else who for the most part did their analytic due diligence uh due diligence right they said on average the average viewership number by december 29th of 2017 uh it averaged out to be around uh, 
three point uh, three million fans, three point zero one eight million fans. That's the total viewership on average back in 2017 from Raw alone. That's Raw by itself. That's what it did by itself. Three million viewers in, to in its totality the entire year. Folks, professional wrestling is dead, bro. And mind you, this is around a time when they were already considering professional wrestling to be dying. 3 million viewers in 2017? Bro, that's something, for an example, I don't even think Thunder wouldn't have got that number back in the mid-90s. But like I said, if the argument that you want to make, even though we had DVRs back then, even though people use tape recorders in order to record the shows whenever they couldn't catch it live, even though they made it a point to want to run home to go watch the show because it was actually entertaining at the time, they didn't say to themselves, oh, there's nothing happening right now. I'll just catch it on YouTube. I'll just look up clips on social media. No, none of that was a but no, no, you're making up excuses. And even then, for the people who want to use the numbers today in regards to their social media, right? You look at their YouTube viewership, bro. They got how, what? What is Raw's uh, entire sub count? I'm curious, or not Raw, but uh, WWE's entire sub count. Just out of curiosity, hang on, WWE. Their entire sub count is one, 104 million, 104 million subscribers. That's how much they get, right? That's how many subscribers they have overall. Now I'm very curious. We look throughout the entire week, NXT, which barely does numbers as is, so we're not gonna look at NXT, that's not fair. I see 1.7 million views for Braun Breaker and Jey Uso for the Intercontinental Championship, right? We scroll even further down, right? I scroll even further down just out of curiosity. We look at SmackDown's numbers, right? SmackDown numbers. Um, 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 Cody Rose and Roman Reigns did 1.3 for their promo, right? Okay, let's scroll down. Let's look at Dynamites for an example. AEW Dynamite. Let's not use, we're not going to leave them out of the equation also, right? AEW Dynamite, their highest viewed viewers, their highest viewed video this week so far from what I can tell looks to be, I think it's Darby Allen and John Moxley and they did 390,000 fans. Folks, even the DVR numbers, it's around the same amount of numbers that Raw would get on average when people actually tuned in to watch the show live. All their numbers combined, mind you, these are days later. We're days away from Raw, days away from SmackDown, days away from fucking uh, Dynamite. The these are DVR numbers. They're DVR numbers. We're not even talking about the live. Their DVR numbers combined couldn't even equate to Raw's year-on-year -year average watching it live. With social media still available, no different today as it was back in 2017. Miss me with the argument of Cali miss me. Miss me with the argument that cable television is dying right now. That's bullshit. Cable television may be dying, but that's not the reason as to what's happening in professional wrestling right now. No, no. That's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's 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 the whole correlation equals causation argument. It's lame. It's stupid. No, because there are different reasons as to what's happening in professional wrestling in regards to the product as to why it's in a position that the Currently is in right now you making up all these excuses it's just lame it's lame and mind you you can have your opinion as far as an individual goes in regards to how you feel about the product i'm not here to tell you not to watch smackdown not to watch raw not to watch dynamite i'm not here to tell you how to enjoy the product i'm not here to tell you who's your favorites or who's not your favorites what i am here to tell you is that your opinion has no effect of what actually is going on with the numbers all right the fact of the matter is they don't have a product right now. They don't. Professional wrestling has nothing standing out for it right now at all. Notice, even for people like me and my audience, you guys, tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. You much rather, there are more backstage going on to professional wrestling right now that you're more clued into, that you're more with your eyes glued onto than you are with anything going on in the product at the moment. There's nothing that backstage wise doesn't capture your attention that for an example, something that's currently going on kayfabe wise can do the exact same thing and have the exact same effect. Now, mind you, you're going to get a couple of people who are going to be like, well, no, I like this storyline more so than anything happening backstage. I call bullshit. 
I think you're just saying that out of convenience as far as what you're seeing right now. Because if that was the case, I could tell you right now, the majority of my audience, if that was the case, then nine times out of 10, you wouldn't be here right now, right? Most people who find the product to actually be good from a kayfabe sense, they wouldn't be here right now. Why? Why? Why do you need to listen to me in, in, in regards to having to hear what's going on backstage wise? Do you know how much of a niche I am? I don't even, I'm, I barely have 5,000 subs. I'm about to get 5,000 subs right now. 5,000 subs. I'm a fucking niche. Like you can't find me unless you looked for me. You can't find me unless you were looking for a specific subject that I happened to talk about and then you clicked on. If you were looking for that specific subject, that means that you care more about the backstage stuff theoretically than you do about the kayfabe stuff. Otherwise, how do you even know this is a thing if you're that glued into the fucking kayfabe stuff? Not the man, it's not to say that you can't do both, but clearly there's a clear indication that you do care about the backstage stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the pain out of picture that no one cares for the current product right now at the moment. It's not a fucking specific AEW problem. It's not a fucking specific WWE problem. It's a wrestling problem. And I do find it funny how I see people like CM Punk, for an example, talk about the Attitude Era. Oh, we shouldn't do things and try to heighten up what the hell we see in professional wrestling because otherwise we get the same effect of what we had in the Attitude Era where we have to outdo, outdo what we did the previous week. No, no, no. See, that's, that's the bad thing. See, this is why I hate when people make the argument in regards to the Attitude Era and talk about what we have to outdo each other from what we did the, po the, the previous week. No, 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 no. You don't have to outdo yourself. We're just asking for a good product. You know what I mean? Anything that happens to do with a character that's being represented in a way that that creates intrigue, that's all we care for. When you show it in sparse or when you show it in such a pattern that just seems really, really boring, then what the fuck are you out doing? Boredom versus less boredom versus less boredom versus less boredom from the previous couple of weeks? There has to be some kind of entry. There's no, well, one week we pop them and then we do boring things for the next couple of weeks, maybe even the next couple of months, and then we pop them again because there's a bunch of time in between when people aren't just gonna, they're not just gonna watch your show anymore. You know, I I, I know, I, here's, a, here's a comparison. I remember I was listening to Charlie, Moist Critical, a couple of months ago, and I think he talked about, you know, him being sick or I think he wanted to do something and he just took a break from Twitch streaming. This is when he was still on Twitch. He took a break from Twitch streaming for a couple of days, right? Only to come back and I think he said he lost thousands of subscribers just because he was gone for a couple of days. He lost a couple of subscribers and I can attest to that also. There's a reason why I upload daily. I mean, one, it's fun and I like what I do. It's really, really fun. But also, I know that if I don't upload, say for an example, for like a week or two or three weeks, the next time I come back, one minute my viewership number is on average around 3,000 views. I come back and I don't record anything. Now my viewership number for the same type of video that I just did is now going to be probably like 1.5 thousand or uh, 1. Yeah, 1. 5 thousand, maybe even a thousand because people move on. When you keep showing the same boring product over and over and over and over again, people move on. That's just it. When are we gonna face reality in the face and just say it? Professional wrestling right now is dog shit. It's horrible. Now, granted, obviously you could compare one product to the next product and you could say which one happens to be good or which one happens to be bad. You can nitpick the nuance in regards to the subject that you're currently watching at the moment that you can say that you liked about it and what you liked about it and come to an average. But on a grand scheme of things, in regards to how you feel about the product, as far as it as far as you having some type of like, I don't know, um, temptation to want to watch it, it's at an all-time low. That's not me suggesting. That's the live number suggesting. Hell, that's the DVR number suggesting. And I hate this whole nonsense of consistently taking the position of what WWE is in right now. They're making all this money despite of itself. They're making numbers in spite of itself. You guys understand that right now, that's what I'm saying. The cable television uh, uh, model is dying. I'm not disagreeing with that. I just hate that you using that as a perfect plausible excuse, which is nothing more than convenience in order to argue about the product being on the decline, when in reality, it's just a facade for you to cover up for the fact that you currently like the product. It's bullshit. 
Television dying has nothing to do in regards to the product. Television dying has more to do as to how they get those contracts signed. Because the contracts that they're signed, it's all about the amount of content that they could put ads on, knowing that the average viewership number for that content is gonna be stagnant no matter what, right? It's a core trait within professional wrestling, knowing that for the most part, you know that you're over a million views, guaranteed in a prime time spot, every fucking time and they can catch your same product on different devices that's unlike any product for the most part that you can get out of a television show you could probably do the same thing for sports obviously but you're gonna have to give more money to sports right right you do it for wwe you do it for aew you ain't gotta spend that much money yet at the same time for the most part have a consistent audience that you can sell ad, ad uh, advertisers to that that's why Cable television is dying, while for the most part, professional wrestling has a guaranteed, trustworthy core audience base who is always going to be there for you to sell ads to. That, that's what you're buying. You're, you're, you're not buying the product in regards, in spite of, say for an example, the product being good. They're, they're selling ads on this as a response to the other television, cable television shows, for the most part, that aren't as prevalent because cable television in itself is not as prevalent, meaning these shows are now in syndication. They'll have a peak for a while, but they don't have a set in audience base that's going to follow it like you follow professional wrestling. That's what's being bought, bro. It's like an infinite money glitch. It's like it's like Monopoly, for an example, right? It's like Monopoly. It's like you have the train stations, right? You have the train stations, b &O, Pennsylvania, Short Line, Reading Railroad. It's not going to get you a bunch of money, right? But if you have all four, there's always going to be a chance that you're going to land on it no matter how much you roll on the dice, right? No matter what, they're always going to be 10 spaces apart from each other. The dices are up to 12. You are always going to land on a railroad. And if you happen to have all four, that's $200 each time you land on it. Is it as much as your average house on a regular place? No. Is it as much as a hotel? Probably 10% of an average hotel on the board. But at the same time, it's $200 guaranteed no matter what you roll. There's a good shot you're going to land on it. That's the cable television market right now when it comes to WWE. They're just four corners of a train station. They make very little, but there's an opportunity that you're going to land on it consistently. But leave it up to these fanboys when it comes to the product in itself, man. They're going to continue to try to gaslight you and tell you that the product is good because so many people are buying it. They want to put advertisers on it. Oh, they're going to put advertisers on it. Yeah, whatever helps you cope at night, buddy. Whatever helps you cope at night. And so is my name is Devante. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. I just thought that was fucking insane. I thought that was nightmarish fuel. I mean, goddamn professional wrestling right now in the shape that it's in. I can only imagine where it's going to be the following year. And I guess at that point, we got to still blame cable television, right? As if what we're seeing right now, the year prior to that, the year prior to that, the year prior to that, as if cable television doesn't exist in that time frame also, right? We're all just living in some fucking delusional world, right? According to you, yeah, right. Deuces, P, Ice.